getting swole. Emergency box from the once was a rare sight. That pipe looks weak. The claw bar should come in handy. way out of this place. No, really, I mean it. Whoa! It's time to find a way out of this place. No, really, I mean it. The Morks produce biomatter in their multi-organ that they shed under distress. Blobs that affect the cellular codings strands of any living being when absorbed, including you. Swoo! Crit! Person. That's a good find. Toxanol built vessels called Arcs to save themselves from the impending doom. But was it too late? It is only from the flight logs of the single Ark they left behind that we know other Arcs traveled through the sky and beyond. It seems those that came before us never lost hope in finding a new home for their kind. Just a few moves left. Make them count.
There are few records of the chain of events that led to the big apocalypse eons ago, but it's clear the world wasn't prepared for how recklessly the Toxinol Corporation would make its mark on the world. Their rare earth mining and nuclear industries generated tons of waste and, without consideration for the future, they dumped it all in landfills until they ran out of space. That's when they made the big mistake. They began dumping the toxic waste in the surf just off the coast instead, assuming that it would sink and decay with time. And they were right. But no one was prepared for what was about to unfold. Once in the surf, the radiation interfered with the genetics of the wildlife and created bizarre mutations in their offspring. It had an inconceivable impact on biodiversity and the entire ecosystem. The world as they knew it crumbled as nature retaliated. It would never be the same again, and what remained of it became ours. The sound of spark metal going pew pew is never a good thing. It's coming from behind that door. A warning label. The box looks like a potential brain melt. It's going to take a bit of puzzling to short circuit the door. Just a few moves left, make them count. There you go. The wheeled one is outnumbered. You'd better help him out. That's the last of them. Let's talk to the wheeled one before backup arrives. That'll come in handy. He wants to thank you for taking his side against the scavengers. He sounds familiar. You just can't figure out why. He presents himself as out of date. He knows he's way overdue, but he hasn't given up. He doesn't seem surprised that you don't recognize him. You were just a child back then. The night everything changed. There have been rumors of a one-eyed Ronin seen outside the Great Wall, and he's happy to see it's true. The legend of the one-eyed child that grew up as an outcast is old and sad. The child could have been anyone, but the evil it had fled had left a mark, a facial scar to remember the past.
Muk bebuk yuba dullu waiwai. It's a scar you're covering under that eye patch, isn't it? But he would have recognized you anyways. You look exactly like your muma. Bebuko kontabe mao toliawahu. There's no doubt you're the child, and that what Lupa Lupin did to your village, your muma and Popsy, was the beginning of the end. Come weeper, weta, gono, kim hobe, bekuku, he fad muk. He says it has taken you a long time to bring the past back up to the present, to find your way back, but he's grateful you have. It was after the attack that the unity fell apart. Your Muma's disciples divided and formed tribes as a reaction to the blight that had fallen upon them. After the old village was destroyed and you disappeared, a struggle between the families erupted and over time, the disciples turned against each other. Had it not been for the Tree of Life, no one would have survived. He hopes you at least remember the tree. Asks if you were tired, as it's a bit of a hike here from the village. He wonders if your Mooma knows you are here. <laughs> You're such a good child, so you probably did. Even the young forget. <laughs> he understands why you came all the way out here, to see them, the potato people. <laughs> The Potato People, or Nono, are a wonder. <laughs> you might be right. Like potatoes, they're packed with energy, an excellent source of key. <laughs> the Nono prefer to hide in glitter grass. He says you should get over there and ruffle it, see if you can make one come out of hiding. One. You should be proud. They don't come out for everyone. The Nono's key energy is just what the Pensai needs to complete its cycle and grow. Only to. You need to support the tree for a long time to come. The only way it'll grow tall is with the burst of key released from the Nono as they become one with the tree. You'll need a net to catch the Nono, and he wants you to use his, but asks you to be gentle. The Nono are sensitive beings, an embodiment of key, the primal energy. <laughs> you handle that net like you've never done anything else. He's impressed. 
He's grateful for all the help he can get. There's lots of Nono out there that need to be guided to the root. <laughs> They're hiding in the glitter grass that mostly grows deep inside damp caves, where they draw mineral from the natural rock. <laughs> One day, he hopes the tree will have grown tall enough to sustain the world. <laughs> but today, your focus is getting this one to become one with the tree. Now that you've seen the Nono's connection with the tree with your own eyes, you have no reason to doubt. From this day on, he'll make nurturing the Pensai into a tree of life, a life goal, not only for our village's sake, but for all of us, everyone. One day, the land won't be as peaceful. Not even your Moomer will be able to protect us. <laughs> you can already see the effects from how reckless those before us acted, and unless something changes, we're doomed. The land won't survive the side effects of the old world's industrial advances. <laughs> he says you'd better hurry back to the village before your Moomer comes looking for you. You did good here today. <laughs> no, she's got lots on her mind and needs rest after the raid last night on the Lupin camp with her disciples. Wonders if they let the Predator family live or not. <laughs> He lost you there for a while, but no memory is alone. It's part of a trail you can follow. He says he remembers The tree started to die when the end of days begun, and it was Records tell of the ruinous devastation the Toxanol Corporation inflicted on the land. The apocalypse sparked a re-evolution, the second coming, and our lineage. His friend Gizmo is working on a Mecton and needs help defeating the Jumbo Puff at the end of the West Route. Wiz is still repairing his octopod to confront the murk puff that dwells deep down under the surface at the end of the northwest route. Noko has tamed the midget and is preparing to take on the hoof puff at the end of the east route. Finally, Goop is almost done with the goo glide a machine able to ride the waves of the surf all the way out to the Porky Puff at the end of the route to the southeast. Out of date, says his friends, are gearing up to stop the World Eaters. There's one at the end of each route. The road ahead won't be easy, but he's counting on your support. His friends aren't strong enough to end this on their own. 
Tolua lu Toluka. He wants you to understand that you'll all die if the tree isn't saved. He claims names have power, so he gave them these names to weaken them. For him, the Porky Puff is particularly personal. It was that carnivorous beast that took his leg. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the Tribe War and the situation with the World Eaters. Oh, whoa, whoa. 